Peter Stern, Chief Strategy Officer at Time Warner Cable. Peter, I have to admit I'm confused with pricing and the value of broadband. Why does it cost so much? I actually would argue that broadband doesn't cost all that much. If you look at the way that, that our high-speed data or broadband emerged, it was actually subsidized by the video business. So we had a significant cable television business, and we used that to basically introduce high-speed data at relatively low cost. The telephone companies had a large voice business, phone business, and they used that to introduce their DSL services at relatively low cost. Uh, if you were actually to strip those businesses away, the cost of broadband would actually have to go up considerably in order to support the massive capital investment we make every year in supporting the plant for broadband. When you add to that the usage growth that we're seeing on, on the Internet, we're seeing peak growth in Internet usage approaching 100% annually right now. Uh, and I think you'll find that actually broadband is not so expensive. Compare it with other important utilities in your life. What the average household, for example, spends on electricity. And the value that we're increasingly getting from the internet, I think, is approaching that. What we're getting from some of these other utilities, I think you'd find that uh, it's not all that expensive, especially in light of our capital investment. That being said, what we try to do with broadband pricing is give people a choice of how much they need. The way that we've done that in the past is based on the speed that customers want. So if we have to expand our network capacity in order to support what we call wideband, for example, we charge more for that service than we do for some of our lower tiers of service like Roadrunner Lite. Uh, in the future, I think we're going to have to introduce another dimension, and that's a dimension of usage. We're still working on how we do that. Uh, our goal is to be able to do that in a way that is fundamentally fair. Why do you think consumers are so sensitive about paying for broadband by usage as opposed to an all-you-can-eat model? I think it's actually because most of us, and myself included, don't really have a great sense of how much we're actually using of this product. But if you look at what's happened in wireless, it actually hasn't been that big a deal. You have an iPad here, Andrew, I see, and the iPad plans, by and large, have limits on them. And most people never hit those limits. We've had to educate ourselves about what internet consumption is. We're all becoming savvier consumers. But at the end of the day, the way most goods should work is that if you use less, you should pay less. And if you use more, you should pay more. What we have to do is introduce this, though, in a way that reduces people's feeling of being out of control. So I think you're going to see us really offer an unlimited or something close to unlimited plan for a very, very long time. Isn't it a marketing problem, though? Isn't it a problem that companies like yours are failing to make it clear to people that broadband is no different from electricity or water or any other utility, and none of us object to paying per unit for water or electricity? I think that's right. I think we all have, we all have to become savvier about this, and it's our responsibility as ISPs to give customers the information they need to make the right decisions. So we're going to introduce those tools so that customers can see how much they're consuming. I think people will be surprised at how little most of them consume. It's really a very small fraction of the population that consumes a disproportionate amount of, of internet bandwidth, and that raises the cost for everyone else. So I think that there are ways that we will find to do this that are fair, that don't result in surprises, uh, but that do create just, again, a more equitable pricing. Yeah, it seems to me obvious, and again, it really comes down to a marketing issue. More broadly, why do you think cable companies have done such a bad job? I'm not just talking about your company, who I think actually does a pretty good job, but why have cable companies done such a bad job generally marketing themselves to consumers? Why are they, in many consumers' minds, the bad guy? If you go back 20 years ago, cable was a monopoly. People had one choice for their video service. Satellite really hadn't been introduced. If, again, if we go back 20 years ago, there was no internet service. There wasn't even really an internet that any of us had heard of. And as a consequence, people, I think, rightly felt that they didn't have a choice when it came to their video service. But fast forward 20 years, and now in our average market, there are three or four video competitors, and we vigorously compete with companies like DirecTV and Dish and increasingly the telephone companies, among others. If you look at what's happened in broadband, we've invested massive amounts of money 
in creating a great customer experience for high-speed data. And again, we vigorously compete against the phone companies. But it's difficult for us to live down that perception that customers have that they, didn't, that they don't have a choice. Because once upon a time, that was reality. And it's, it's absolutely our responsibility to try to change that. And we're trying to do it by delivering customers more choice in terms of the products they get from us and better customer service.